In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use a, a semantic style approach to CSS in Ionic 2. Uh, it's not really specific to Ionic 2, but I'll be using this uh, uh, application I created with Ionic 2. Uh, this is a tutorial I posted last week, so I'll link to that in the description so you can check it out if you want. Uh, but I'm going to talk through how I usually approach CSS styling in Ionic 2. Uh, and specifically how I created this uh, interface here. So what I mean when I say semantic style uh, CSS, uh, if I just jump into the code for this application here, uh, this is the SCSS file I have for uh, that particular page we were just looking at. And what you'll notice if you take a look at the styles I have here is that I don't really use any classes or IDs. I'm mainly just using the names of the actual elements uh, themselves. Uh, so I have a selector here for Ion Avatar, and that is just the, the element name itself. It's not a class. The only classes I'm actually using here are the alternate and plain classes, uh, which I set up uh, somewhere in here. So I've got a, a ng class set up here, which is, will either apply the alternate or the plain class, depending on some condition. But apart from that, everything else, not nothing in here, has a class or an ID that I'm targeting. Now, I'm not going to talk about whether this is a better approach. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if this is considered to be best practice, uh, but it's something that I prefer to do. I find it easier to work with. Uh, there's less code to write in here, and it feels easier to maintain to me. So this is the style of, um, style of styling that I prefer. But the problem with using this sort of approach is uh, how to then uh, apply the styles you want to specific things. Like if I want to target something specific in this uh, template, how do I get that one specific thing that I want to grab without using a class or an ID or something like that? So using a class or an ID isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, it is like I'm using some here. It's not something that has to be avoided at all costs, but uh, usually you can grab references to things, uh, the things you want, without having to resort to using a hard-coded class in your template. So I'm just going to walk through uh, the CSS I have here and then just talk about a couple extra strategies you could use to um, grab references to, uh, to specific things. And so one of the coolest things we have uh, in uh, when using Ionic 2, since it uses SAS, is we can use this uh, select the nesting. So you'll see here the first, this is all contained in sort of one giant uh, CSS selector. Uh, we have iOS and MD. We can uh, select these classes here to apply styles specifically to iOS or Android. So anything that's surrounded in one of these two tags is only going to be applied to that specific platform. Uh, since I want this to apply to both Android and I iOS, I just use both here. Now the reason I'm even including that is uh, because of something called specificity in uh, CSS. So what that means is basically the most specific CSS rule is the one that is going to get applied. Uh, since Ionic has a lot of its own styling, I usually just put uh, wrap everything in these uh, classes here to make my rules more specific. So most of the time, if I'm trying to apply some styling and Ionic is also trying to apply some styling, uh, my rules will win. And then I also have it wrapped inside of this page home selector. And so the home page uh, has a selector of page home. So that means that all of this is going to be wrapped in an element in the DOM, although we can't see it here, it's gonna be called page home and that's going to contain everything. So any styles that I add inside of that are only going to apply to this specific component, which is a really nice way to separate uh, code out into components. So we, we don't have to worry about styles we're writing here conflicting with some styles we wrote for a different page. And that's especially useful if we're taking this semantic approach to styling because we're not adding those specific classes, we're just targeting these generic elements, which will probably be in other pages uh, as well. So if we look down this list, most of what you'll see is uh, I'm just using uh, element selectors directly rather than using a class or an ID selector, which would have a dot at the start for a class or a hash 
uh, for a um, uh, for an ID. So I'm just targeting the element specifically. And then if you take a look at the the last select I have here, the ion footer, I've then nested some rules inside of that ion footer selector. So what I'm saying here is I only want to grab uh, the columns that are inside ion footer. Now this doesn't really matter in this case because I don't have any columns up here anyway. But let's say if I had some columns down here and some columns up here, but I only want to target the columns that are down here. That's one way that I can just specifically get those columns is by nesting it inside of its parent element, which is ion footer. So this can be a, a really good way to grab those specific references because we can uh, we can create as many levels of nesting here as we want. We could have, well, I only want to select uh, a paragraph element uh, that is inside of an iron column that is inside of an iron footer. And then you could go even further than that and uh, nest something inside of there as well. Now, I like not to get too crazy with the nesting, like usually one, uh, two or three levels uh, most of nesting is what I prefer to stick to, uh, but you can nest as much as you want. Uh, if I am getting down into some really specific things where I'd have to create uh, an element that's nested five different times, I would. that's when I would probably resort to just using a class because it makes sense. This is perhaps I have some really specific element that's just in this one place and I just need to style that one thing, I will just add a class to it. So there's no hard and fast rules here, just do what makes sense to you. So aside from nesting, there are some other things we can do to grab uh, references to specific things. And uh, one thing I am doing here is uh, creating an attribute selector. So I've wrapped ion item here in some square brackets and that's the syntax you use if you want to select an element by an attribute that it has. So if we look in here again, you'll see that I am using a button. This is a I'm um, using button for the ion list because it is uh, clickable. So rather than using an ion item as the actual element, I instead supply the ion item as an attribute. And so I can use that attribute to grab a reference to this element, which I'm then um, styling. And so the reason I might want to grab this attribute uh, specifically is because if you look down here, I've got some buttons down here as well. And so if I tried to take this semantic approach, I might just say, okay, well, I want to style the button, so I'll write button and add the styling. But the problem with that is it's also going to apply to these as well. So a, more, a better way for me to describe what I want to do is grab a reference to the iron item instead, because that is what I'm styling. Uh, if I wanted to just target these buttons down here specifically and not this button, uh, perhaps I would instead, or well, since it's in the footer and I want to start all buttons in the footer, I would just nest this inside of ion footer instead. And now that styling would only apply to buttons in the footer. And uh, a better way to do this would actually be to move that button inside of this selector here, just to neaten things up a bit. And you can even get more specific than that with attributes. So if we take uh, the columns down here, for example, they have an attribute, but they also have a value for that attribute. So they have a width of 33. And so let's say if I want to specifically grab only ion columns that have a width of 33, what I can do is I can uh, create another rule here and we'll put it inside of ion footer just because that's where it is. and sort of uh, organizes things nicely and it's going to make sure that you know we're not targeting columns uh, with the width of 33 that are outside of the footer. So I could come in here and I could add a rule of uh, attribute selector here that grabs width uh, and then supply a value as well. So we want elements with an attribute of width that also have a value of 33. So if I just set that to display none and we'll see if that applies correctly. So you see it just dis uh, disappeared there. So that means this rule has uh, successfully grabbed uh, any columns with a width of 33, or rather anything with an attribute of width that is set to 33. So then if I wanted to be even more specific, uh, it doesn't matter in this case because these columns are the only things that have that width attribute. But if I had other things with a width attribute as well, I could instead supply uh, the element here as well. So now it's saying I want to grab iron columns with, specifically iron columns with a width of 33. 
Uh, so if I save that again and make sure it still applies, uh, it does. So we'll just delete that for now, save it and see if it comes back. Okay, cool. So another useful thing that I'm not using here is let's say um, I want to apply some specific styling only to the first uh, item in the list. So maybe I have uh, something at the top here that I want to display and for some reason I want to move just that first item down but I don't want to apply any margin uh, to the rest of them. Now in this case I would probably just apply that margin to the list itself to push the whole list down. Uh, but let's say for some reason we want to apply some styling specifically to this just this first item. And so what we can do to achieve that, so we have, uh, we're have we using uh, these buttons here and like before we grabbed a reference to this ion item attribute. So we're going to use that as the selector again. So let's say I want to add that margin to the first element in the list. I could do ion item first of type. And so this is a pseudo selector. It's a called a pseudo selector, I guess, because it doesn't really, it's not something that exists in the document, but uh, we're describing you know, the type of uh, element that we want to grab here. And there's lots of these. Uh, this is just one example, but you can have things like last of type and uh, first child, nth child to grab any number of uh, children. Uh, you also have your standard sort of hover and active uh, pseudo selectors. Uh, so if I just apply a margin top of 100 pixels here and save that, we should see that now we have this big gap above the first item. But if I wasn't uh, specifically grabbing a reference to the first one using that pseudo selector and save that, now the margin applies to every single item and we have big gaps between everything, which is probably uh, not what we want. So a good resource to check uh, for these sort of pseudo selectors and all kinds of selectors you can use uh, is this CSS selectors reference on W3Schools. They have a list of all the types of selectors here that you can use. Uh, there's obviously a lot of different ones. Uh, you can see the, the ones I was talking about before. We had the last of type and la uh, last child. Uh, but each of these has a has a description of what the selector does, so you'll be able to see how you can grab references to different things based on what you want to do. So there's a ton of different ways you can grab references to your uh, elements without having to use classes or IDs. And when you take this approach, I think the end result is a lot neater. Uh, we don't have to mess up our uh, template code here with a bunch of uh, custom classes and IDs that we're hooking into. So it's, it's faster to write, it's faster to code with, looks cleaner, and I find it just to be yet more organized in general. Uh, but again, I just want to reiterate that it's not bad to use classes. They're there for a reason, and I'm using them here, and you should use them too. Uh, it's just I generally try to avoid using a class where I don't need to. Okay, so I hope this tutorial uh, gave you it's a little bit of an insight into how I go about styling applications and maybe how you might apply some of that uh, to your own um, styling as well. Uh, especially when we're using uh, SAS with Ionic 2, uh, we can do a lot of really powerful stuff uh, with our styling. Um, even some things that I haven't mentioned here, uh, like these custom SAS variables I've set up uh, for the, the card height here. Uh, perhaps I'll do another video on that at some point, but. Yeah, take some time to, if you're not familiar with the different types of CS, uh, CSS selectors, take some time to get familiar with them, try using some of them in your applications and, and see uh, how it might make uh, the code for your applications a little bit simpler and a little bit cleaner. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.